Welcome back to American Arms Channel, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Drake, and as you can tell by the title of this video, today we're going to be discussing and having an overview of the Winchester SX4. This is the three and a half inch model in all black. I believe that they call it the Black Shadow or something like that. Anyhow, this is actually my wife's new duck and goose gun for this past season. This was kind of her wedding slash Christmas slash birthday present. And um, let me tell you, just right off the bat, it's an excellent gun. In fact, it's so excellent that when I asked her to be on camera to discuss it, give her impressions and some hunt reports on it, she said no, and I love the gun, it's fine. So there you go. No more review needed. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, if you hear noise in the background, like chewing, it's the dogs having fun with their bones. It was the only way I could keep them quiet for the review, so bear with me. If it drives you crazy, feel free to click away. Uh, to start, I'd like to, uh, as I always do with shotguns, uh, start off with ergonomics, handling, and pointability. Uh, the forearm has been a point of contention for some people. Uh, I've heard it described as an ergonomic 2x4 uh, or a very hard squash. The latter I thought was really funny. Uh, <laughs> really, the finger grooves on it, the molding, uh, the just solid feel, has no wobble, really, really good feeling forearm. In fact, I like it a lot better than the SX3, SX2 forearm, which I've handled before. And um, I really do like it, and it fits my hands very well. It fits my wife's hands very well. We're not very small people. I'm six foot three uh, with a six, eight, or nine wingspan, I think. She is six foot nine. I don't know her wingspan. But um, we have relatively larger hands. Her hands are smaller and they still fit this forearm very well. So good execution on it. I don't think it'll, it'll fancy everybody's tastes. Uh, I prefer a slimmer forearm overall. The Vinci, the uh, SBE3, even the SBE2, though it has kind of an of a enlargement as you come back towards the receiver, kind of a drop, it is still skinnier than this, I do believe. So uh, I do prefer prefer a slightly smaller forearm, but uh, overall this is really, really good execution on this and it, and it makes it a Winchester and you expect a little bit beefier uh, features with an American made duck gun. Moving back to the stock, it is length of pull adjustable, it comes with multiple shims and spacers. Uh, the way it came out of the box fits my wife perfectly, so no need to adjust for me. Uh, it's alright. And uh, of course, with heavy clothing, it fits better. But this isn't my primary duck or goose gun. This is my wife, so I honestly barely use it, uh, other than just testing and evaluation. I don't hunt with it, um, so I'm going to be relying on on her take, which I discussed with her prior to this video, as far as the hunt report goes. Um, anyways, I digress. Uh, the buttstock is very nice. Uh, the comb is. Is slightly narrow uh, compared to other 12 gauge three and a half inch Magnum guns that I have handled and shot. Uh, it's got SX4 on it, Winchester logo. It's all dappered up with uh, the cool factor and these nice uh, static lines, etc. Uh, there is uh, some, I wouldn't call it, it checkering, but uh, just some, some grooves molded into the plastic here. I don't think that's to grab. Uh, but it is uh, very aesthetically pleasing and it looks good. The uh, Inflex recoil pad or whatever they call it, uh, very hard actually. Uh, not It's a closed cell foam and it's not very cushy. The Benelli, even though they have harder uh, foam pads now with the Comfortech uh, Plus, which is on the Vinci series and the Comfortech uh, 3 stock system, which is on the SBE3, um, even those are those are a harder closed cell foam. This is this definitely takes the cake for a very firm. Uh, it's not as bad as if it was just plain plastic, but uh, they definitely could have done a little bit better job on the recoil pad. But it does flex the harder you push on it, so I guess it does what they intended it to. There's some sort of design feature with the Browning and the Winchester is supposed to direct the stock away from your face. I have not felt that. Uh, I. And on slow motion, I've not seen the gun move away from the face. Perhaps on the SX3 and the Browning Maxis it does, but uh, if this is the same pad they're putting on those guns, I highly doubt it. And I've not handled or shot those guns uh, 
shot them at all. I've handled them in the store, but never enough to really pay attention to the pad. Uh, anyhow, next feature, the wrist of the stock, the semi-pistol grip on the stock, is uh, smaller than the SX3. And they said there was, this was to get your gloved hand on it better. Now, even Benelli and other manufacturers have gone to making the wrists of their stocks a little bit smaller, a little bit more easy to handle for smaller statured shooters as well as larger uh, statured shooters with gloved hands, etc. I don't think it's a, a hindrance. It feels really good. The, uh, the palm relief cuts on the point of the comb are very nice. They fit my hand relatively well. They fit my wife's hand very, very well and give you a nice reference point. The one thing I would say I can complain about with the wrist of the SX4 is that it has straight line checkering. Uh, and it's not really checkering if it's just straight lines, but it's very much like the Vinci series. However, they are faint and very close together, and in my opinion, do not offer very good grip. Uh, so if, and that is to say the same with the forearm. There's not really great texturing on it. You can, because of the shape of the stock, you can really get a good grip on it and hold that sucker down. But you may, you may find your hand slipping forward as you fire heavy loads, like heavy ounce and a half goose load, three and a half inch goose loads in late season. So there is a little point of contention as far as handling goes. But other than that, uh, it'd be easily fixed if you want some really aggressive tape on there, you know, get some skateboard tape, cut it to fit, etc. A lot of options if you were so inclined to modify the plastic on the gun, you could easily stipple it with a uh, soldering gun. Uh, so, or soldering iron, excuse me. Uh, so, other than that, the, the next thing I'd like to talk about is the operating features of the action. And by that, I'm going to mean the charging handle, the bolt release button, and the safety. Now, in my opinion, the safety is fantastic. It's a big square. They decided to go with square features on the SX4. I think it was more of a design change, uh, an aesthetic design change, than it was a uh, ergonomic or functional feature. I do like how large the charging handle is. My wife does appreciate that as well. When you're really cold and your hands are really locking up because you're out in negative degree weather or whatever chasing those stupid birds, it really helps be able to palm that easily and get it open. Because this is a stiff action. This gas operated action is fairly stiff. Now this one is broken in, but it is a very stiff action in comparison to inertia guns. You're fighting a lot of recoil spring and it takes a bit of effort to get that bolt unlock because it is a tilting bolt system. So, uh, you know, it gives you a lot to grab onto. It's really nice. Uh, the bolt release itself, uh, when a gun is first out of the box, and I have seen this across multiple guns uh, that are brand new in the store, you would press it down, it would kind of let go a little bit and then chunk forward. As you shoot it and operate the gun more, it will get rid of that. I think it's just a little bit of a hang up in the tolerances. Um, if you ease the bolt forward, it may not always close completely or lock up. You can see I did it there. Uh, even so, if you were to experience that in the field because the gun was really, really dirty, the charging handle is large enough and there's not enough resistance there, you can just give it a nice slap and it'll go in the battery. So good execution on the charging handle, very functional. Um, it does come out relatively easy. Some people have reported losing this. I would keep an eye on it. Honestly, your design fix with that is stronger detent, uh, ball and spring as well as a little bit deeper cut on that and that would solve that problem right away Maybe somebody will offer an aftermarket solution um, But uh, so far so good. We have not lost ours I think as long as you make sure that suckers in there and you don't pull out at all it, when you're trying to rack the action Shouldn't be a problem Safety again very large square uh, very easy to manipulate as you rise into the gun and transition to the trigger uh, you do want to try and Put it on by reaching through the trigger guard so of course reach underneath and touch it uh, that is not only a, a safety concern on all guns with a, a rear trigger guard mounted safety but it is definitely a concern with this gun because although they said that they made the trigger guard area larger for gloved hands i'm not really seeing it in fact uh, i think the original uh, sx3 had about the same space by looking at uh, pictures and seeing the guns and handling them in stores. So 
I'm not convinced that that actually was a design change. I think aesthetically it's a little bit different, a little bit more squared off, kind of reminds me of a Benelli uh, trigger group, but as far as appear outward appearances are. But um, what feels really good is this nice, smooth, well-finished, uh, blued trigger. And a very light trigger pull. I would say that you're probably at, oh, you're probably around the four and a half, five pound mark with that. And just to confirm, of course, the gun is empty. I'm going to turn the gun upside down. We're going to set it on the floor. Put my finger through. Safety's off. Gun can't even get off the floor, and the safety's going off. So this, and this gun weighs right around seven or so pounds. So definitely way under seven pounds, which is more than acceptable for a shotgun, especially a hunting shotgun. Um, some people I know, Randy Wakeman, complained that the trigger was really heavy. Don't know what was going on with his example. All I can report on is that this example and any examples I've handled in store are very crisp triggers. Maybe a slight amount of crack travel between different guns uh, but this one has just barely take up and then it breaks so really nice shotgun would definitely without modification put a slug barrel on this or uh, do whatever you need to to get this gun ready for slug shooting and would definitely be more than adequate in deer woods you're using the invector plus system for the chokes we have a code black goose in this gun excellent choke tube by the way uh, the bead is, I would say, moderately sized, and it is fairly effective and bright. You could add an aftermarket bead if you wanted to, whether that's a click-on, glue-on, press-on, uh, you know, like 3M tape, or uh, just absolutely uh, replace the original bead with something larger. I, I think a lot of people modify that when they feel they need to, but uh, it's well protected. It has three bars over the top of the light pipe, uh, so... They can get banged around and uh, not see really any problems. Yeah, and, and we have banged this gun around a little bit. It's just experienced normal wear and tear over the past uh, six months or so. And uh, it's really great. So I'm going to refer to my cheat sheet. Uh, reliability is exceptional. If you checked out my video on the ammo gauntlet for the SX4, it, it just absolutely eats everything. We have not put anything in it lighter than an ounce and eighth dove load, and that's been 1145 feet per second. We really don't buy anything lighter than that because we don't shoot a ton of sporting clays, and most of the time when we're buying a target load, it's also for doves. So if I'm buying a case of dove in target, it's going to be an ounce and an eighth, and it's going to be around 1200 foot per second. Uh, we really don't mind in my family having a heavier hitting load because practice with what you shoot and uh, for hunting doves and, and other small game you know ounce and eight to ounce and a quarter at uh, 1200 to 1300 feet per second is what we use so that is perfectly acceptable I have no doubt in my mind that uh, any two and three quarter gram, dram or greater one ounce load would operate this gun uh, if you get too light of dram you're not going to have enough expansion with gas and it won't reliably cycle the action because it is an active valve system uh, other than that let's see patterning absolutely exceptional it is a backboard overboard whatever you want to call it shotgun uh, with the factory chokes it has very consistent patterning did notice some holes appearing we did put the code black goose in it and then across loads from number eight dove loads all the way up through T shot just exceptional patterning a really really great if you want to open up the spread go smaller shot if you want to close it up go to a larger shot my wife never has to swap chokes uh, and she does great she doesn't like to practice shooting skeet a lot but she's a very good natural shot and took some very good shots at ducks this year in fact her first kill with this gun was a widgeon and it was about uh, 45 50 feet overhead one shot dropped it uh, the boys missed, and uh, and she nailed the duck fair and square with number fours. Ounce and eighth number fours, Winchester Super X, and uh, really really good hit, really good shot. Uh, with that in mind, one thing I do want to bring up about handling is that the SX4 does not like uh, to be shoveled three and a half inch magnums that easily through its load gate. Two and three quarter inch shells, three inchers go in like butter. Uh, the load gate is nice and smooth and polished, really fantastic. The springs are the right pressure. It does have a plastic fowler, uh, which you could replace if you wanted to, but um, seeing no functional issues out of that. 
and really, really good execution, but the loading gate and the size of the uh, trigger group in the bottom of the gun makes me really feel that they just took this idea of a three inch gun and stretched it into a three and a half without changing certain features like this. I could bet you that this is probably for the most part interchangeable with the three inch model. And that is a problem when you're trying to put three and a halfs in it. And while you can fight your way through that, it does become a little bit of a hassle when you got heavy gloves on and you're actually needing those three and a half inch magnums or you feel you need them for late season geese. Uh, and really the three and a halfs, not so much for um, just absolutely obliterating birds, of course, as it is being able to get that significant pellet count, that large high pellet count, so BBs, triple Bs, Ts, in really late season, I'm talking late January, early February goose, and even early snow goose season, conservation season, when you really, really need uh, to take those long range shots, because that might be all you get that day. So, and the birds get really tough. Anyhow, value for the shotgun, I believe, is excellent. Uh, it comes in at price point for the three and a half inch model of 750 to 850 for the black, and then uh, 850 to 950 for the camo pattern guns. The three inch model is going to run about a hundred dollars less, both for straight black as well as the camo pattern guns, and. Really, I think your value is there. If you're looking for a gun that's going to be under $1,000 before tax, this is a great option, and I don't think you'll be disappointed. If you are looking for a gun that you can just use, you know, you'll take care of it, but you'll use it, a gun that will be reliable for you, a gun that will serve your needs exceptionally well, and is a 50-50 patterning gun, is American in style and American in function, you can't go wrong with the Winchester SX-4. Uh, we will have more reports on this, but after over, I believe, and most of these rounds are from me, I believe we've got over 500 rounds out of this gun, both hunting and, and patterning and just general target shooting, just playing around and having fun with it. Um, having that round count through it, I can't say verbatim that it's absolutely amazing perfect without flaw as far as reliability, but I've got a pretty good idea that it won't fail seeing how it hasn't failed or hiccuped at all in that entire time. So the value is there and I think it really is an exceptional gun and it very much surprised me. I didn't want to like this gun when it came out, but uh, handling it and taking a look at it, it's, it's, you know, it's a slam dunk. I wouldn't call it a perfect home run, but it went over the fence and I think it's going to be around for a long time. The Super X series is a venerable series of shotguns for a reason, and the SX-4 is right there with its compadres as far as I, everything people who love Winchesters come to know and expect. The hunt report, uh, not a lot of birds taken with this gun because one, my wife wasn't able to get out in the cold as much or able to go with me because of having to work Saturdays, etc. But um, I've taken a few dubs with it. Uh, She's taken multiple teal, a couple widgeon with it. Uh, it has yet to taste the blood of a goose, unfortunately, and she was really looking forward to that this season. But uh, maybe next season we'll, we'll get a few honkers underneath this guy's belt. And, uh, you know, I, I really have a loss for words for saying anything else because it really is a great shotgun. We'll keep you updated in the future with any changes or... Uh, different performance that's outside of what I reported on here and what you've been viewing from me in the past months. But if you have any questions, as always, make sure you leave them in the comment section below. I always try to respond. Uh, if you're interested in a Winchester SX-4 yourself, stop by your local sporting goods store or request one. Uh, I think you'll have a good time with it. And I honestly can say if you like the way it handles in the store, you don't need to find somebody with one or arrange a lot of you to rent one. Just go ahead and buy it. You will enjoy it. Uh, the one very, very last comment I will make is that the action on this gun is inherently violent. But it's extremely reliable and the violence of the action doesn't change from the lightest dove load to the heaviest goose load. So for what that's worth, take it as a grain of salt or what have you. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe. I upload 
more consistently now than in the past, and I, I hope you enjoy the content I'm producing. Uh, until next time, I'm Drake, of course, for American Arms Channel. God bless, keep your powder dry, and we'll see you in the next video.